Oh, it's you again. Turned up like a bad penny. You've done your damage. Clear off now and maybe no one will get hurt. Whatever are you on about? Don't play fool. Don't play the outraged innocent with me. I'm not a complete fool. You knew I, that I was... You knew that spreading tales about me and Sarah would get me suspended from the team. But you thought you'd make a killing at the bookmakers by getting me sacked. You're as stupid as you're, you are malicious. Everyone knows knows the team doesn't stand a chance without me. No one will take your bets. Now get out of here before I lose my temper. I guess now it's time uh, to do the uh, direct approach. Uh, should we do super direct? Crazy direct? Or roundabout? Hmm. The official line, then. I assure you that you have misinterpreted the facts. We are working with the police on a criminal case. Your trouble, while regrettable, is merely coincidental to this matter. I may have broken the rules of the team, but I've broken no law. You won't get me with that. Now get out! Try this. I assume it is our melancholy du duty, Mr. Sanders, to be the bearers of bad news about Sarah. Would you oust us before you've heard it? I've had enough trouble today, and you're the cause of it. I have no use for anything you have to say to me. Now get out! Fine. Alright. Then... Mr. Sanders, your lady friend, Sarah Carraway, is dead. And you're as, you're daft as well as malicious. I see. Get out before I throw you out. We're working with Scotland Yard investigating Sarah's death. You must believe that you must believe that so you can help us find her murderer. I don't believe you. Why should I? You've only done me harm. Sarah's not dead. She can't be dead. You can't convince me that she is. It happened early yesterday, Mr. Sanders. I'm sorry. Perhaps, I I if I had proof, an official death certificate, or... But no, I saw her two days ago. I don't know what your game is, but I want you to get out of here, now! Well, he wants a death certificate, does he? I wonder if the morgue will release something like that. Holmes is important enough. I apologize, I need to adjust the sound settings once again. Please stand by. The sound settings have been adjusted. Thank you for waiting. Now we get to talk to the coroner again. Let's see here. Ah, oh, here we go. I would like to look at Sarah Carraway's death certificate. Is it available? Yes, Mr. Holmes. I just finished filling it out. It's there on the body. May I take a copy? May I take it or a copy of it with me? Certainly not, Mr. Holmes. This is an official document to which the seal of the city of London has been affixed. As for copy, that would be highly irregular. I don't believe I could sign for such a document in my official capacity. In any case, there are no government copyists employed here. Huh. Hmm. He needs proof that she's dead. Wait a second. I think I know what to do. Let's head back to Baker Street. I think I know. Remember Jonas, the newspaper guy? He had that little, uh, sign above his stand. The Ripper Strikes Again. Maybe he's got a newspaper left over from the day before. Oh, hey, Wiggins is back. Let's talk to him first, shall we? Have you located the source of the flowers, Wiggins? Yes, sir. It's a girl, name of Leslie. She sells flowers just like the one you gave me. She has a nice cart set up in Covent Garden. Covent Garden? I think it's Covent Garden. Covent Garden, just outside a pub. Well done, my boy. Here's your payment, and a bonus for the lad who tracked her down. Alright, let's talk to Jonas, shall we? Here we go. 
Jonas, I need a back issue of the Times, yesterday's early edition. It was the one which named the young woman who was murdered behind a Regency theater. My apologies, Mr. Holmes. I'm afraid that edition sold out completely, and later editions as well. I've no leftovers lately. Most folks are following the police investigation into this ripper business. And then yesterday, some the sporting fancy was in a frenzy for any news about the cricket from the cricket matches in Melbourne. Spa Forth was bowling, you know. They'll have some issues at the office in Fleet Streets, I wager. Thank you, Jonas. I'll take your advice. Now who runs odd errands for Holmes? Wiggins, I have an errand for you. At your service, Mr. Holmes. Go to the Fleet Street offices of the London Times. Find a copy of yesterday's paper, the early edition, mind you, and bring it back here. A half crown ought to how to cover, cover your trouble. Half crown will do just fine, sir, but Fleet Street's a long way to go for something I got right here. You see, this jacket of mine have been wearing a thit thin, and the time's just the thing to fill the line and keep a body warm, sir. Mr. Jonas is always kind enough to spare a page or two that he has left at, at the end of the day. Would this be the one that you're looking for? Yes, my boy. That's just the one. And let's make that a crown, shall we? That should be enough to fetch you a new jacket. Well, before we leave, let's take a look. A copy of the Times. It recounts the death of Sarah Carraway. Here we go now. Time to pop his balloon. Back to Eden. He still seems kind of pissed. I have a copy of yesterday's Times that describes Sarah's death. I am very sorry. Show it to me then, or leave me in peace! Give newspaper to James Sanders. Well, he's a pretty quick speed reader. It, it, it can't be true. My... She's dead? Who, who's responsible? I'll pull out his arms. I, I'll... This is Mr. Sherlock Holmes, consulting detective for Scotland Yard. And I am Dr. Watson. We are trying to find her murderer. We require your assistance. So it appears that this guy, the guy who sent her the perfume, is probably not the murderer. Or at least I don't think so. He doesn't match the description of a guy wearing a cloak. But before we talk, let's take a look around the room, shall we? The scarves. A half dozen or so emblematic school scarves. After a hard-fought and well-played scoring contest, boys often exchange their own scarves for the scarves of their opponent as a mark of respect. A well-thumbed, leather-bound body of Lewis Carroll's The Hunting of the Snark. Let's see what else is here. Rugby jersey. The size and condition of the rugby jersey suggests a gigantic man who was repulsed by neither, ga by neither grass, mud, nor blood. Its position makes it seem a kind of shrine, either to the rugger or to the person who wore it. An impressive and tasteful selection of sporting awards grace this rough-hewn trophy shelf. The trophies appear of recent vintage, and the name Jane Sanders is engraved on each one. Well, he must be a pretty good player. This antique and splintered specimen appears to have some value to the person who hung it in its place of honor. The inscription, 132 not out, 16 May of 72, has been etched into the business end of the bat with what looks like what looks to have been a white-hot fireplace poker. <laughs> 